okay, when I, when I work, I begin to rotate the pencil just a little bit so that I can let that edge put the color down on the paper. And that gives me better control over where the color is going. Now I'm ready to rotate the pencil again. It just gives me a little edge that I can use to help deposit the color down in the tooth where I want it, rotate it again. As soon as I rotate it, it becomes very sharp on that edge, so I have to kind of lighten up a little bit on the pressure. And then as I work and wear it down, eventually my pencil point is going to look like this. It's going to be worn down all the way around as I've rotated the pencil. Now, everywhere where I want to use the pencil, every part of that point is too dull for me. So I need now to put the pencil back into the sharpener and do what my husband told me was refreshing the point. So basically, I'm repointing the pencil, but I'm also bringing that little flat edge back again. So now I've sharpened the pencil, I've cleaned it off, and I'm ready to go again. I've got a reasonably sharp point and I'm ready to put pencil down. And that brings me to how I put the pencil down, and you've watched me do that already. But here are some of the strokes that I use, and I'm gonna turn this around because it works better for me this way. In my younger days, we're not going there, <clears throat> when I did a lot of drawing and a lot of coloring with my pencil, and that brings me to one other thing I wanna say about the pencil too. When I was working on large areas, like a background, I would start putting the pencil down in what looked like strokes that all went in one direction. And what I realized was as I began to do that, I was developing these horizontal bands of condensed color where I got much more color, like a double dose of it, and then areas where I didn't have quite as much. What I had to do then in order to make that background look really nice and smooth was to go back and put that much color back on and try and even that out so that those strokes didn't show. And I was really frustrated with that part for a while. Eventually, I just kind of played around with the pencil for a while and I discovered that a stroke that looks like this, which you can call a circular stroke or an oval stroke or whatever you wanna call it, I still rotate my pencil, but I found that a stroke like that puts down that double dose of color right away you just get a lot of color right on there because you've got all this overlapping stuff that's happening. And now, in order to make that application look smooth, I don't have very much work to do at all. I just go back and wherever it looks thinnest, I go ahead and put down some more color. If my pencil isn't sharp enough, then I'll just sharpen it up and put it right in there. And I do have students that, when I explain this to, Students are trying to do a circular stroke that looks like this. Trust me, this one is not gonna work. This one just doesn't do it. It needs to be these ovals, and they need to overlap one another, and do it like this. All right, so here's the leaf, and it's a little bit hard to see, but I've given myself an extra piece of paper. This is a piece of heavy tracing paper, and I've drawn the pattern of the leaves on the paper. So what I wanna do is put that pattern right over the top of where my, my sketch is. And because it's tracing paper, I can see right where those lines should go. That will be the pattern that I impress. I don't wanna impress the outline of the leaf, just the veins in the center. Now I'm taking an 8H pencil, and this is a really hard pencil. This is about the hardest graphite pencil you can get. I'm gonna use that pencil to press those lines down into, through this tracing paper, into the paper itself. And I wanna make sure that this paper doesn't move around or I'll get lines where I don't want them. The other thing I wanna be careful to do is not to go down through the tracing paper because if I do, I'll get a dark line, pencil line, that ends up in my picture. So what I'm doing now is just pressing those lines down in. They don't show up a lot, but I've already done that over here on this next example. So what I need to do now is take a colored pencil, doesn't matter what color right now, I actually want to take a color that will go into the leaves somewhere, but I can work with bright colors or green, whatever. I want to sharpen that up a little bit, and now I want to just, on a piece of scrap paper somewhere, and I'm going to take this, just blunt my pencil just a little bit 
so that when I start to apply the color, you can see those lines pop right out. And if my pencil point is not real pointy, if it's a little bit dull, it won't slip down into those impressed lines. And the nice thing about that is, as I apply the color now, I don't have to think about avoiding those lines. I can just think about how I'm putting on the color, what color I'm going to put on next, how I'm applying the pressure, where the color will go. And then as I start with a new color, and I'm just picking up this color, I don't even care what color it is right now. This will be a darker color. It's a blue, but it's turning green as I put it down. I can think about the color. And as I put it on, you can see the, the impressed lines showing up and I don't even have to worry about avoiding them. And then if I want to go darker, it's just really easy to do. I can see the lines and I can avoid them. And I can go a little bit darker with the pencil. I'm going to take what is probably a little bit darker red than what would be happening up here, but I want to blend into that. So I'm going to take my crimson red again, and I'm going to work up just toward the red, the lighter red. And now I am really reducing pressure. I can see the spots starting to show up already. So I know my dots have impressed. And as I go ahead and put the pencil on here, I'm just going to show you how I would blend a little bit up into that lighter color. So here comes the blend with the lighter pressure, working a little bit darker pressure down into the spots and blending just my, my values so that they gradually change from light to dark. Then I want to move to Scarlet Lake, which is a lighter red. And now I'm going to put that down a little bit with a little more pressure and work that out toward what was sort of pink. And I want to go ahead and put the color right out almost into that green part. And I need to sharpen my pencil. So now I'm working the color down into the tooth and I can see the change in color right away. I'm going to be careful so that I don't get into my little dots that I've impressed. But again, I'm going to just try to blend the color so that it gets lighter and lighter out toward where most of the green happens. I'm still rotating the pencil a little bit. You know how that works. And I'm putting a little more pressure right in here. And then I'm going to start letting, loose our, let, letting up on the pressure as I get up in toward this part right here. Now, I want to move to my Carmen. And the Carmen is a light color, so I can use even heavier pressure here. As long as the point is a little bit dull, it's going to work really well and avoid getting down into those little dots, which are beginning to show up nicely. And once again, as I get up toward the top of the apple, I'm going to reduce pressure and keep it lighter up there because I'm still going to add one other color. So now I'm going to fill in areas that I did not fill in before. And you can see the red really start to develop once I start doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on that for just a second so that you can see the whole process here and really see how the red begins to pop right here.